So I love fantasy, and thankfully there are plenty of them coming out soon from dark, epic, adult, and even some YA to keep you busy, so here are 20 new book releases coming out in November. These are the ones to keep your eye on. Subscribe to this channel for more monthly new releases videos, and thumbs up this video if you find something new. So starting on November 3rd, we have the release of The Shattered Realm of Ardor Ben by Tyler Whitesides. This is an adult fantasy that is being re-released from Orbit Books with a brand new look, aka beautiful beautiful new covers. They actually re-released the first book last month right here and the sequel right here in November and the third one will be coming out in December. This is an action-packed epic fantasy series set in a world with dragon-fueled magic where master con artist Ardor Ben must infiltrate a centuries-old secret organization to find a missing royal heir. It's full of thievery, heist, and mystery and you can dive into them immediately or wait another month to get these really cool updated covers. Also on November 3rd, we have Legacy of Steel by Matthew Ward. This is an adult fantasy. It's the sequel to Legacy of Ash, which looks like this right here. This first one received a ton of great reviews and reader input. It definitely got my attention and many others for its medieval setting and huge world building. I should probably be holding up the sequel. It's an epic tale of intrigue and revolution, soldiers and assassins, ancient magic, and the internal clash of empires. If you're looking for a big and true to epic fantasy as you can get, check these out. The Alpha Enigma by W. Michael Gere, a well-known sci-fi author that I still desperately need to read from. This is a new sci-fi mystery from him and the plot sounds like something from my freaking dreams. One of the storylines is following an archaeologist who uncovers an 18th dynasty tomb that shouldn't even exist. It's filled with Mayan epigraphy, mathematics, and materials that didn't exist 3,000 years ago. And as a result of this discovery, he is snatched away to a hidden lab to solve the enigma of a man lost in time. It sounds like a movie and I'm so ready to discover what is actually going on. So moving on to November 10th, we have The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winters, the anticipated sequel to The Rage of Dragons, which received and is still receiving a lot of buzz. In truth, this is one of the coolest series I've ever read. It's very novel and Evan Winter knows how to sync up the action in a very good way. It's African inspired and a really dug a hole in the fantasy genre, it kind of burrowed its way through secretly and it settled right in. It's got dragons, a diverse culture, a cool magic system, it really expanded upon what we normally come to expect in a fantasy and it twisted it in its own way. I recommend the first one for sure. And then we have Refraction. This is a new sci-fi thriller coming from Angry Robot. I just really love this cover. It's so abstract and artsy looking. It's definitely something you would see in a museum. I feel like. This one is about a loner cursed with a psychic power who learns he was a part of an experiment as a baby and embarks on a hunt to find those responsible. It's literally about infants being exposed to an unknown substance that creates powerful talents, which sounds very superhero to me. I'm very unsure about that aspect, but read it and let me know if it's influenced in that direction at all. Or I'll read it. The Camelot Betrayal, the second book in a YA fantasy trilogy from the author Kristen White. It's the sequel to The Guinevere Deception. I'm so so happy that they kept with the style of the bright illustrated covers. I swear YA publishers like to go ham on cover changes and I was worried about this one but thankfully they stuck to this beautiful style. This one is an Arthurian legend retelling and if you like the first one then you do not have to wait long for the sequel. The Factory Witches of Lowell, Witches on Strike is the slogan for this one. This book presents a historical fantasy about labor actions like you've never seen before. It's a novella that takes place in the 1800s when two close friends resort to witchcraft in order to strike against the unfair working conditions in the mills. Since everyone is apparently bound by magic and no one can break the strike and it follows them through to the end of their collective action. There's witchcraft, lesbians, a fight against Big Brother. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a short but very impactful read. So November 17th is a very exciting day for many fantasy lovers. 
Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson releases. Do I really need to say anything else? Should I just end the video here? The Stormlight Archive saga continues in the eagerly awaited fourth book. It's super hot. It's about to come out of the oven. It's set on Roshar, a world with rich history, mythologies, magic systems, and an ecology which has been shaped by violent storms. This is a massive world building at its best. This is the next Brandon Sanderson series that I need to go on to myself and I plan to do that next year. I'm currently obsessively making my way through the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwen, so there will definitely be time for this eventually. The Burning Guide, the exciting end of the Poppy War trilogy, R.F. Kuang's acclaimed award-winning epic fantasy that combines the history of 20th century China with a gripping world of gods and monsters. It's a bit of a military fantasy that is incredibly dark and brutal. I have found the books get better with each one one, so I expect this one to be pretty much flawless. It is a series ender, so we will see how the author handles it. So far, early reviews have all been just pure gush, so I'm not at all worried, except my heart should be worried apparently because, um, lots of tears, I guess. No Fake Lost by Essa Hansen. I actually have a physical copy of this one, but it's all the way up there and I forgot to grab it. The physical copy is beautiful, by the way. This is an adult sci-fi following a misfit group of aliens. Just buy it. Those are the only words you honestly need to hear. Okay, I'm just kidding. So when a young man's planet is destroyed, he sets out on a single-minded quest for revenge across the galaxy. This is the first book to an epic space opera trilogy from an awesome debut author. I'm very happy for Essa and I'm sure this book is amazing. It pretty much has everything a sci-fi should have, if you ask me. So if you're looking for something that I think is going to give the sci-fi genre a run for its money and is brand spanking new, check this one out. A Bright and Breaking Sea. This is a seafaring fantasy starring a dauntless heroine in a world of magic and treachery. It's a historical fantasy with some naval military aspects to it. It's following Kit, who is the captain of the Queen's fleet, when the Queen pairs her with a Viscount named Ryan to infiltrate a pirate stronghold to rescue a kidnapped spy. She's not very happy about it, but she must suck it up because her country and home are at stake. So this definitely sounds like it has quite a bit of romance in it, which isn't my cup of tea, but I am all for the swashbuckling adventure. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is a new YA fantasy fans for The Last Magician and The Sentence of the Crane. This heart-stopping debut is an imaginative Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai with rival gangs and a monster lurking in the depths of the Hongpu River. This book has been getting some positive buzz and I like it. It. There is so much going on for it in that synopsis. No wonder everyone is kind of flocking to it. I'll be honest, it kind of gives me Jade City vibes with the mention of rival gangs and kind of like an Asian inspired setting. There's a lot of political scheming behind the scenes and I am all for the sound of this one. It screams very loudly. The Children of Red Peak by Craig DeLouis. This is a coming of age cult horror story with an added bonus of psychological suspense. It's following three points of view, so three separate characters, and they all become childhood friends when their respective families join a religious community. It all starts off as a sort of uplifting, righteous place to grow up, but soon it devolves into a living nightmare. I mean, this book couldn't have come at a better time. November is still spooky season, so if you're looking for something that's going to raise the hairs on the back of your neck, look no further. The Boy, the Wolf, and the Stars. This is actually a middle grade fantasy that I really wanted to highlight today because the premise sounds so interesting. It's about a boy and his pet fox who go on a quest to find a wolf who has eaten all the stars in the sky before the Shadow Witch destroys the stars and removes good magic from the world forever. And it's apparently for fans of The Girl Who Drank the Moon and Nevermore. I'm not entirely sure if it's part of a series or if it's a standalone, but but I think it sounds really cute and magical. So now we are moving on to November 24th, and the first one I'll be talking about is The Poison Prince. This is the second book in a medieval East Asia-inspired epic fantasy trilogy. The first one being The Throne of the Five Winds, which I have right here. The covers to this series are so cool. Very fantasy core. In the story, there are six princes fighting for the throne, so it's heavily political and schemey, hopefully without being too boring. I didn't get a chance to read the first one, 
again but i do want to give it the attention it deserves and pick it up because it's lengthy which i love and it introduces a lot of elements that i also love call of the bone shifts by rj barker this is an epic adult fantasy a sequel yes another sequel it's sequel november everyone the first book being the bone shifts those titles are so similar i kind of wish the title to this one was a little more different but that's a tiny complaint that means nothing in the span of things this book takes the high seas and creates a unique twist on ships made from dragon bones there's massive catapults savage sea creatures an equally savage society driven by war we're dragged in with the main character as him and a ship wife are on a mission to save the life of the last dragon it sounds so so cool and i love the fresh take on dragons ready player two by ernest klein i was going to say this is the highly anticipated sequel to ready player one but is it though I just don't think we need it. Also, does this mean there's going to be a second movie? Because the world don't need it. I don't know. I really don't have anything to say here. If you loved the satisfying ending to the first one, you can make a choice whether or not uh, this is worth it. And the final book I'll be talking about today is Ruin Song by Julia Ember. First off, I adore this cover. I love the simple color scheme. It's very eye-catching and I want it to be good so I can own a physical copy. This is a YA book that is a dark, lush, LGBTQ plus romantic fantasy about two young women from rival factions who must work together to reunite their country as they wrestle their feelings for each other. The main character is also apparently a powerful mage, so I'm interested to see how that plays out in the story. Is it going to be complex? with a lot of texture probably not but hey i've been wrong before and i kind of hope i am in this case and that is it for the month tell me below what are you going to read what are you interested in leave me a comment or let me know subscribe if you haven't already if you want your monthly dose of new releases because that's what i'm here for follow me on instagram at hollyheartsbooks and on twitter at hollyneese and until we meet again happy reading